Hello, uh, my name is Carol Hallman. I'm 55 years old and I live in Pocahontas, Iowa. I'm pleased to be part of the Pan Patient Resource Guide, the video project for 2009. Uh, today's date is August 15, 2009, and here's my story. I'm a 10-year survivor of a stem cell transplant in 1999. My husband Leo and I uh, just celebrated our 26th wedding anniversary this year. Our children, um, Andy, Julie, and Mary, are now 23, 21, and 18. I practice law part-time in my family law firm, and I'm once again involved in music, civic clubs, and my church. My message for you today is that I, I want other breast cancer patients to become breast cancer survivors and to know that there is always hope in your cancer journey. So I'm starting at the end of my story, now that I'm cancer free, to show that there is light at the end of the tunnel. This spring my family threw a huge party for me to celebrate the 10th anniversary of my stem cell transplant. My story begins in 1996. At age 42, I was diagnosed with breast cancer after learning I had Paget disease. My family doctor diagnosed the Paget disease and ordered a mammogram at the local hospital. I decided to have a left breast mastectomy because chemo and radiation didn't seem the best options. I had no aftercare because the test did not warrant it. The tumor was not uh, the size. And uh, then in 1998, a small lump was discovered on my left side. And I heard the phrase primary care failure for the first time. Breast cancer cells had not all been removed from my, with my surgery, and they had traveled to my liver, and I was then diagnosed with stage four metastatic breast cancer. I learned that these patients have a very low survival rate. I was very scared. In 1998, our children were 13, 10, and seven. I was so scared and afraid I would die before we had raised them. Leo and I and my oncologist, Dr. Stephen Kahanick from Sioux City, agreed upon the most aggressive treatment plan. Six months of chemo drugs, adriamycin and taxol. The cancer responded to chemo, but didn't get all the spots on my liver. I had to decide what to do next. Throughout my treatment, I always had the attitude I would do whatever it took to beat the cancer, whatever doctors ordered, whatever drugs were prescribed, I was so young and, and otherwise healthy. I hoped and prayed that if I could survive the rigorous treatments, I would survive the cancer. December 98 was a, a crummy holiday for me. Uh, we discussed my possible death and funeral arrangements. We visited a bone marrow unit out of state and came away full of despair because they gave me a very short life expectancy, even if the transplant were successful. Dr. Kahanick suggested I get a second opinion, so we scheduled an appointment at the U of I hospitals in Iowa City for the first week of January. A few days before the appointment, a young woman who I call my guardian angel visited me and gave me a message from the Lord. Stop talking about death. She gave me this scripture that she'd received, Ephesians 6.13, put on the full armor of God that you may be able to resist in the evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. I was awestruck and speechless, but now I went to this new appointment with a beautiful, peaceful sense of calm. I wasn't going to die. I was going to do everything the doctors asked of me, and I had the hope that I was going to survive the transplant. Leo and I had a, uh, had a good meeting with the head of the bone marrow unit at U of I hospitals, Dr. Roger Gingrich. I checked into the hospital for a five week stay. Bone marrow was removed and stored. Then I had a, a week of high dose chemo, then the bone marrow transplant. There were so many unpleasant physical symptoms associated with the transplant and the recovery after. But now that I have the vantage point of being a 10 year survivor, I would do it all over again to have the chance to live. 
I developed a warm and, and humorous friendship with my attending physician at UI Hospitals, Dr. Marguerite Silverman. I had a friend here at home, Sylvia, who had started me out on vitamins and nutritional supplements the summer of 1998 to boost my health and strength. And I stayed on that program uh, actually to, to this very day. When I came home from the hospital in 99, I then um, um, underwent 30 radiation treatments on my left side just to be sure the cancer cells were gone. I also took tamoxifen for five years. Since going off tamoxifen, I've been taking aromacin daily and I have twice yearly doses of Zometa, which may be discontinued after I've had 10 or so doses. In my early years of recovery, fatigue was a big issue. I had to adjust my work and family schedule to have a two hour nap every day. Today a daily nap is still part of my schedule. I try to stay active and exercise regularly, but I'm ever mindful of what my physical and mental limits are. I no longer push myself each day. When I need rest, I take it and hope that those around me will be understanding when I shut down. The rest is very restorative and I can generally bounce back in short order. Here are some of the things that, that really helped me the most to combat my cancer. Uh, I was already on a good diet because I'm a celiac sprue uh, patient. Uh, I never smoked. Um, throughout my treatment I had a positive mental attitude to do anything and everything asked of me to fight the cancer. I was surrounded by good people who also remained positive and who supported my family. Powerful prayer across my community and the state and the country. My parents and brothers had people praying for me from coast to coast. And of course, modern medicine. This whole combination helped create a miracle for me to talk to you today. I'd be happy to talk with other breast, can breast cancer survivors or patients or if someone is contemplating a bone marrow transplant. Now, now I'd like you to meet my family. My husband, Leo, and this is our son, Andy, is 23. Our daughter, Julie, is 21. And our daughter, Mary, is 18. Thanks for watching my video. It's been a joy to participate in the Patient Resource Guide for 2009. Thanks, everyone.